Tony B the RD here, and I hope you are excited for Pumptonian's first edition of our Nutrition News for the 2023 school year. And right next to me is Eric. Eric, say hi. Hi, I'm Eric. <laughs> and Eric is a part owner of Busby Farms, and he is going to take us on a farm tour today, and we are going to see the cornfields. Now, in New Jersey, we are known for our iconic super sweet corn variety. And our corn is so sweet because the sugars in the corn take a long time to turn into a starch. So when we take the corn um, off the plant, it is still has a high sugar content and hasn't turned into starch yet. So come on kiddos, let's go. I don't know about you, but one food I associate with New Jersey during the summertime is corn on the cob. But in terms of acres harvested nationally, sweet corn is number one vegetable crop, even ahead of tomatoes and snap peas in the U.S. A.T. Busby Farm is a family farm. My parents started this farm in 1981. Uh, they were just a couple of young kids with a dream of farming, passion for growing fresh produce. And I'm second generation here. I've been here since I graduated from college in 2004. And uh, so we grow a variety of fresh produce on 170 acres. What is challenging about growing sweet corn? Well, on the farm tour with Eric, he mentioned a few interesting facts about harvesting corn. The harvest window is very short. Specifically, it's about three to four days. If you harvest the corn too early, the corn kernels are too small. And if you harvest the corn too late, the kernels are mealy and hard to chew. This is why we cannot harvest the corn too soon or too late and we need to get it just right. Because corn can grow from spring into September, they use a planting schedule. This is to make sure corn is available through the whole season. They plant on different fields at different times throughout the season, so there is constantly corn ready to harvest. And this is a corn plant. Uh, one of the things that's different from what you might see in like children's books and cartoons is that each corn plant usually produces one ear. So and we'll start here at the bottom. This is the corn stalk. It's the vertical part, this thing here. And then the corn has leaves. At the top, you have tassel. And then somewhere towards the bottom of the plant will be the ear. So this is the ear of corn. When it's ready, we'll snap it off like that. And now you can see the ear has a husk on the outside and from the top it has silk. So if you were to take off the husk, you would find that the corn is inside and each one of these things is called a kernel. So corn kernels. One of the things that we consider when we're choosing a sweet corn variety is the flavor. I mean, that's like the main thing that we consider. So there's a lot of things to consider. You've got like cold soil germination, uh, you've got the vigor of the plant, the disease resistance of the plant, the height of the plant, the type of ear that it makes, the row count on the ear, the husk cover, the type of flags, which those little green things coming off the side of the ears, those are called flags. Those are favorable because they make the corn look nice. <laughs> so like some nice flags are good. How hard it snaps. The tip cover, because if that doesn't have enough tip cover, then the birds can get to it more easily. Like there's so many different things to consider, but shelf life, flavor is you know still key. a key flavor a key consideration flavor is still a key consideration when we choose our sweet corn variety and for that reason we've been growing the most delicious varieties we can find for 25 years and we've started to really develop a reputation for having some really good sweet corn sweet corn i'd say in general new jersey tends to grow the better tasting varieties because a lot of our markets are local. The farms either sell directly to the public or they sell to like a, a independent grocer or a roadside stand that sells directly to the public. So we get that immediate feedback. If something is good, customers come back for it. So somebody who's like shipping from out of state, like their primary consideration might be yield. Mm -hmm. so they can have like the lowest cost of their product. Mm -hmm. But for us in New Jersey, we're a lot closer to our customers because we have a lot of customers here mm -hmm. and there's a lot of opportunities for local marketing. So in an environment like that, uh, the flavor tends to take a much higher priority than other considerations. Is this your busiest time of year? It is. Yeah, our busiest time of year is harvest season, which begins in May. Okay. And extends through the end of September into October a little bit. So during that time of year, I work seven days a week. 
And uh, and sometimes we put in you know eighty plus hours a week, sometimes ninety. But um, and it's hot, so you know we get a little bit tired this time of year. Best part of the soil is what leaves first and travels the farthest. So the best part oh. of your soil would be your organic matter, and organic matter is light compared to like soils, basically like very small rock particles. But organic matter is stuff that used to be alive, so it's like humus material, like uh, very decomposed plant material. Okay. And it's usually got a dark color to it, so soil that has a lot of organic matter will have a dark color to it. But organic matter is light, so if you have like a strong wind and you've got dust blowing off the farm, that organic matter is going to be the thing that blows the, easy, the, mo the most easily. And that organic matter, is that what um, helps provide the nutrients to the plant? Yeah, organic matter is critical. Number one, organic matter is carbon. Like that's what organic means. It's mm. carbon based. So when you have organic matter in the soil, that's carbon that used to be in the air and it's now in the soil. So if we can take the more of carbon that we can take from the air and put it in the soil, the better. Now, once the carbon, the organic matter is in the soil, it does the important job of holding nutrients. So one of the, when you take a, a soil test and try to measure your soil, there's a um, number one thing that you measure is like your pH. So like if you're a gardener, you want to make sure your pH is correct. But then like the number two thing that you want to pay attention to is your cation exchange capacity, which is basically the soil's ability to hold on to nutrients, which would then be available for crops. And if you have high organic matter in your soils, you have a much higher cation exchange capacity. And that therefore benefits the nutritional quality of the crop. Absolutely. So our soil is where our nutrition starts in this story and in this process. And that then feeds into the corn on the cob that you're going to eat. And then by going back to the importance of eating locally, if this corn is being picked at the proper time, we're therefore once again getting the best possible nutritional uh, profile. The first thing that you want to look for is the corn that's got a nice fresh husk. So as a consumer in the grocery store, sometimes you'll find corn that's uh, in the cob. Sometimes it's been uh, stripped off, so it'll be like uh, just bare corn with no husk on it. I understand the convenience of having no husk, but the mm. corn comes with a perfect wrapper. <laughs> And that wrapper, the husk, really helps protect the corn, keep it nice and fresh. And, and um, so when you take that off, it really, I mean, I guess they put the cellophane plastic over it, but to me, I'd rather have it in the husk. The other reason to choose the corn in the husk is if the husk is still nice and fresh looking, and it's not all like dried up and crispy, then you know that that corn is fresh and it's a lot more likely to be delicious. But if it's all dried up and brown, you better just leave that for somebody else. We can steam corn, we can grill corn, we can boil corn, we can pop the kernels of corn, but that was the Indian variety yeah, of corn. Yeah. And that gives us popcorn, which is a great snack for a movie night. And then corn can be turned into a flour, like we were uh, discussing before, and it can be used to make uh, corn tortillas or corn chips. So corn, generally speaking, is a very versatile vegetable. So our, our corn crew will get out there 6 a.m. every single day and they get to work. I mean, usually two or three hours they're out there picking corn. It's a lot of work, it's heavy work. And they'll take a little corn break in the <laughs> middle, strip some corn back, eat an ear. So kiddos, there is a reason why the farmers are getting energy from the corn. Corn is what's called a starchy vegetable. And starchy vegetables are high in carbohydrates. And carbohydrates, once we digest them, they turn into glucose into our body. And that's our body's primary source of energy. And then if we have extra glucose in our body, what we do is we store it for later use in a substance called glycogen. And it's normally stored in our muscles. Now, let's look at if you're in gym class and you're maybe playing kickball or um, playing soccer. We rely on these backup energy sources, the glycogen, to turn back into glucose for our energy supply. Just like Eric said, the farmers are eating corn as an energy source and it's giving them a quick boost of energy. We spoke about the fact that corn can give us energy, but it also has other nutritional benefits. 
Corn contains vitamin C. This is good for our immune system and it helps ward off diseases. Also, corn has a substance in it called a carotenoid. Carotenoids are good for our eyes and vision health and they can help protect or protect against uh, cataracts. And then corn also contains fiber. And we have discussed fiber in other editions of the Nutrition News, but fiber is good for our digestive system. It helps feed the uh, good bacteria in our intestines and fiber makes us feel fuller longer. All right, kiddos, this wraps up our first edition of the Nutrition News video series for this school year. I hope you enjoyed your tour of Busby Farms. Corn is my favorite vegetable. Why? Because it tastes amazing. We look forward to serving you this school year. Be on the lookout for the next edition of the Nutrition News.